TCL makes most of its money selling TVs, and it's been making its own branded affordable smartphones for over a year now. But if there's one thing the company seems to love doing, it's producing weird concepts and watching people react to it. Back at CES, it showed off a phone with a rollable screen and a 17-inch device that unfurls like a scroll. Then this week, TCL trotted out a device their engineers call the Fold and Roll. And really, that name says it all. The Fold and Roll starts off as a pretty conventional looking smartphone with a 6.87 inch display, but things don't stay conventional for very long. When you need a bit more screen space for your ebooks or your web browser, this concept device unfolds Madex style into a squarish tablet with a larger 8.85 inch screen. And when you need even more space for watching movies or something, that screen rolls out from its housing to become even bigger, 10 inches diagonal. The fold and roll might not be as strange as some of the company's other concepts, like that weird trifold tablet last year, but it's pretty close. More importantly though, this actually seems like something people might want to use. After all, who wouldn't want a phone that can stretch out to provide just as much screen as you needed? With the right components under the hood, the folder roll really seems like it might be that one device that just does it all. But now it's time for a reality check. Just as we've seen with the company's other outlandish concepts, there's no guarantee the fold and roll will ever actually go on sale. In fact, we can think of a few reasons why TCL won't go through the effort of building a smartphone tablet hybrid like this anytime soon. For one, the fold and roll arguably folds the wrong way. Just like Huawei's Mate X and XS, this device's flexible display curves around the outside of its body instead of folding inwards on itself the way the Galaxy Z Fold 2 does. As a result, this design leaves the Fold and Roll's big, pliable exterior screen susceptible to all kinds of damage from drops and junk in your bag. To date, the only company of note that ran with that Audi design was Huawei. But when it came time to build the Mate X2, it gave up and built a Samsung-style foldable instead. It's just better suited to life in the real world. And then there's the price. A device like this with multiple mechanisms for stretching out the screen will probably cost a lot to build, and so it would have to sell for a lot too. Making smartphones and tablets with steep price tags is the last thing that TCL wants to do, for now at least. The company has already confirmed that it plans to release a smartphone with a foldable display sometime this year, and when we spoke to TCL Mobile's marketing chief last year at CES, it sounded like they were aiming for somewhere around $1,000 or less. When you consider the fact that LG's ill-fated rollable was rumored to cost as much as $2,300 at launch, it's hard to imagine TCL churning out folding rolls cheaply. Over the next few years, if the TCL brand picks up steam with shoppers, the company might just go for broke and make pricey foldable rollables. For now, it's best to think of the fold and roll as another very public experiment. The market for foldables and rollables is still in its infancy, and the industry is just still figuring out what concepts and what formats will stick. In that way, it kind of feels like we're stuck in the early days of the smartphone era. Before the devices all turned into pretty slabs of metal and glass, companies tried all kinds of things like physical QWERTY keyboards, capacitive touchpads, 3D screens, and all kinds of other weird features that never went anywhere. The fold and roll is born from that same kind of ambitious experimentation. Maybe this is a glimpse at what future phones will look like, or maybe this is another evolutionary dead end. The kind of curiosity that YouTubers will make explainer videos about 10 years from now. For more coverage on concept phones, wearable technology, laptops, and everything in the world of consumer technology, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And as always, thank you for watching.